Hello everyone, this is Tetsuya. Thank you so much for watching my video again today. Today, I am going to introduce impressive and interesting facts of the University of Singapore based on my student experience at NUS, National University of Singapore. Some of the points I am going to mention are what were simply interesting, and some of them are what I felt impressive. I am going to cover 13 facts I noticed at NUS today. So let me get started. One, emergency caution at orientation program. First, this is one of the orientation slides of NUS. When I saw this, I was surprised at seeing this, and this was also interesting. It is because in Japan, though there are sometimes weird crimes, terrorism is not common. So only time we hear the word terrorism is on such as TV news, and the incident is also about other countries. That's why it was surprising to receive the instruction about terrorism. Then, in case of the orientation of Japanese universities, what sort of emergency topic do you think is instructed? In case of Japanese university orientation, as you might be able to imagine, there is often the instruction about the evacuation process in case of earthquake. What to do the moment the earthquake happens? Where to go next? How to act, etc. Two, the roof. This is the same in many parts of Singapore, but the university was also not the exception. When I was studying at NUS, I lived in Kent Vale. Kent Vale is a condominium which normally accommodates international NUS professors. My classrooms were MBA classrooms. There are almost two kilometers between Kent Vale and the classrooms. Most of the way was inside the building, but maybe 10 to 15% of my way was outside the buildings attached with roofs. The rain in Singapore is often very extremely hard with a lot of thunderstorms, which is typical for tropical weather. But I really enjoyed walking under the roof all the way long down to my classrooms in rainy days. It was really a well thought design and impressive. Three, outside space. At many places in the NUS campus, there are these outside study spaces. I really love them and also use them very often. I believe there is not this kind of fixed outside space anywhere in Japan. Because in Japan, there are four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Among them, two seasons are not suitable for the people to stay outside. It is too cold to stay outside in winter. It is too hot to stay outside in summer. But Singapore has tropical weather, so the climate is stable all around the year. That's why they can make the most of these spaces a whole year. If this space is made in Japan, the space will be wasted about half a year, being not used for too hot and too cold seasons in Japan. Four, use for libraries. The university library were also just wonderful in so many aspects. There was a great collection of English books on any subject, so I just had a look and didn't read them very often. The design was so nice and inside the libraries were so spacious. The atmosphere was so welcoming who wants to do their work. There is a space for the students to chat in a relaxing atmosphere like here. On the other hand, there was a specific reading room in which students are not allowed to make noise for everyone to be able to focus. There were plenty of rooms exclusive for discussion like this and very easy to book online. It was hassle-free to borrow some equipment like these online. The instruction about how to borrow books was so simple and easy to understand visually explained. This is even amazing that there is a space for phone call. Maybe these days people use messengers more often. So I actually didn't see any student using this space, but the facility itself is impressive. And this space must have been used more often in the past. During the exam, the toughest time for the student, there was this sort of message shown in the libraries and even some free snack and drinks was prepared for the students. 
What a brilliant pair of the students. There are a lot of great university libraries in Japan, but so far I can't find any Japanese university library which can beat any US libraries in my personal experience and opinion. Five, fine at university libraries. This is actually not the first time I experienced this, but still interesting. At the NUS library, if students delay returning the books they borrowed, the student have to pay fine. Maybe this system will be relatively common in many countries possibly, but in Japan, as far as I know, I have never seen the same system. So even if students don't return books, there is no fine. One of the Malaysian friends who studied at NUS and at the best university in Japan told me he likes the Japanese library system because he could delay returning books, but no fine. Of course, he was just joking though. Six, great deal with seminar events by inviting such as government officials or presentation events. At NUS, I attended a lot of seminars of a lot of different themes. One of them was about culture and different religions. Another one was a presentation of startup businesses. And another one was done by inviting CEO of large telecommunication company in Singapore. Other was the instruction of how health ministry in Singapore was planning to deal with the health problems, especially focusing on diabetes in Singapore by inviting the health ministry official of Singaporean government there were a lot more seminars that I attended, but most of the seminars had impressive quality and I enjoyed them. At least in Japan, I haven't heard any seminar which invites government officials. Seven, delicious free meal after seminar events. Food is safe is great, but I could make new friends on the dining occasion. And this would sometimes be even more fun for me than the seminar itself. At NES, there are often free meal sessions after the event. Sometimes the food is especially gorgeous, and it is always really fun to enjoy free meal. Also, quite often, I saw this noodle as part of the meal. I don't know why, but maybe this would be some typical food in Singapore. Anyway, furthermore, through these free meal sessions, I could even make a few friends by randomly speaking to the people who were in the session. So this free meal session was not only good for me to eat food, but additionally good to expand my own human network at NUS. NUS is the best university in whole Asia. So having just one new friend at NUS is a great benefit. And that friend network even more expands from one friend to their friends. Eight variety of different kinds of food at very reasonable price. This is about a school cafeteria. At NUS, there are variety of different kinds of food shops, especially Southeast Asian and South Asian food shops. There was other food like Korean food, Japanese food, some Western food, but especially the food from Southeast Asia and South Asia looked authentic and I really enjoyed them. Of course, generally speaking, it is for students. So the price was reasonable. So there were some a bit luxury restaurants within the NUS campus as well. Nine, amazing size of the campus. Actually, the campus size of NUS was impressively huge. Even though Singapore is a small country, Singapore doesn't hesitate to use its land for something very important for its citizens and to get international talents. In other words, Singapore is really carefully using its small land to maximize the efficiency of its land use. Also because of the size of the campus, there are even buses running within the campus and the buses are free. I really enjoyed taking the school buses to move around NUS. I mentioned the roof to way of NUS earlier, but the buses also help the students to move without getting wrecked in case of rain. 10. Startup support. This is also the very impressive part of the role of NUS. NUS is combined with incubator, and both are financially supported by the Singaporean government. Within the university and the incubator, 
a lot of startup events are organized and also startup businesses are supported and grown up. Also, the quality of MBA professors at NUS are great. They often have very practical business experience, and some of them are entrepreneurs and investors. 11, excellent international professors. NUS is headhunting the excellent talents from all over the world and having them become the professors at NUS. I once met an American professor who was a vice president of IBM in the US. I was astonished by the fact that NUS headhunted such a person and if this is how NUS obtains professors. I thought that there should be a lot of professors who have outstanding backgrounds like him. I could feel how much Singaporean government is aggressively investing money to grade up the quality of the university to keep its world university ranking high. 12. Great deal of international students from all over the world. The international talents are not only about the professors. High percentage of master's degree students and PhD researchers are also international talents from all over the world. This will also bring the future contributors to Singapore. After they have finished their course, very often these people work in Singapore and contribute to Singapore as a result. 13, poker vending machines. There were a lot of poker vending machines in the campus. As you may know, Poka is a very famous Japanese beverage company in Japan. It's not directly about the university, but it was interesting to see a lot of Poka drink vending machines in the campus. So all of these things are what I felt impressive or interesting at the university in Singapore. Thank you so much for watching my video up until here today. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.